Hey, welcome back to my Minimax 1100R uh, build, and it's a little bit modified build if you're new to the channel. Not, not modified really at all for the majority of the airframe, but from the firewall forward, um, I'm going to be using a 45 horsepower um, half VW with dual ignition, um, and it'll be the, uh, the Hummel um, engine. Um, so from uh, Scott Kassler, that's the one I'll be doing. Uh, 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 magneto, primary ignition, and uh, electronic, secondary ignition. So that's, uh, that's what I got going on here. And so I'm back at the shop today and the epoxy is, uh, is set up on what I've got uh, here so far. And um, Flying Cub is uh, very uh, observant and he noticed that the diagonals in the rear part of the fuselage are not in place yet. Um, that's because in all of my lumber over here, um, this whole section right here is all my tail feathers pieces and I've got a little three quarter by three quarter. I've got some uh, two, two by three quarter that have to cut down. Um, but what I'm actually missing is uh, 5 sixteenths by 5 eighths. Um, so I, I ran out of that material, so I have to cut some of that. And I think I've got a 5 sixteenths board here that just needs to be uh, ripped down. I can get a couple pieces out of it. <clears throat> and that should get me through the, uh, the rest of the, uh, through the rest of the fuselage for drawing five. I need to cut two more, um, uh, two or maybe three more. Uh, it doesn't matter for 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 the next drawing and uh, then I'll have all that material that I need and I also need to cut some more uh, three-quarter by five-eighths and uh, maybe another stick of uh, uh, three-quarter by three-quarter because forward of the forward of the uh, firewall here all of the material forward is three-quarter by three-quarter the Hummel plan for the modification actually shows this piece here as three quarter by three quarter. It's easier to build it three quarter by five eighths, so it matches all of this for me. So if it's just an, a little additional um, gluing material that it's looking for, I'll just go on the inside and I'll add a piece of eighth inch material. Uh, I'll laminate it, clamp it, and that'll give me three quarter um, once I have uh, once I have this plywood on and have it off the board um, but it was much easier to do it this way with three quarter by five eighths and then convert it over later because you can always you can always laminate it in place so uh, I'm gonna cut some lumber here and then uh, yeah I'm gonna do that first and then we'll get the rest of these uh, diagonals in place all right All right, so I got plenty of wood cut now, and I uh, actually went ahead and I went ahead and cut the the wood that I need for the uh, top and bottom of the fuselage as well because um, we're in the five eighths direction as far as thickness now, but when we when we go to the top and the bottom of the fuselage, we're going to be going the three quarter direction. So I needed three quarter by five sixteenths. And the, uh, the plan calls for um, so much of that. So there are, I just wanted to say this about these plans. There are two sheets that are just invaluable. And one of those sheets is a complete material list. All of your raw stock wood sizes are over here. All of your plywood um, is in here and uh, here's all your metals and then these are all like kind of special things and additional items that are needed fuel tanks all that kind of stuff and then the second sheet actually tells you by drawing number 
across the top. The RS numbers are here. It tells you by drawing how many inches of each of those pieces of material you need. So when I'm getting ready to move to drawing number four, I can look on there and I need 338 inches of uh, 5 16 by 3 quarter. So I have three pieces at 144 inches, so I have more than enough of that. But it's really, it's really a lot of really good detail. Um, so if you're a scratch builder, it just makes it um, really nice because you're not cutting up a bunch of material that you don't need. You can kind of keep track of how much you actually do need. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the team plans are just easy to follow, uh, simple instructions, um, just very few things are head scratchers in there. It's pretty well, pretty well explained. So, okay, well, we're gonna lay out the, uh, uh, for these diagonals and there are just a couple of important things um, to know. And uh, we'll go down here and take a look. There are some, uh, some bubbles on the plans here that actually uh, direct you to this section, which give you closer up detail of what you've got. And right behind where the seat goes, um, this uh, station four right here, it actually tells you that um, if you look at E, you have to leave an eighth inch gap for a piece of plywood to fit in there. So that's this area right here. I'm looking at it this way. So I've got to measure off and leave an eighth of an inch right here, but I'll actually do that with the plywood itself. Uh, let me grab a piece of that. Just happen to have a piece right here. It's the eighth inch mahogany ply. So I'm just gonna fit that in there. Um, So I'll just uh, fit that in there, make myself a mark right here, and then I'll know uh, exactly how much to leave. So, so that's my mark right there. And uh, yeah, so that's where I can't get any closer than that with my piece. So I'll stay just outside the line here and the uh, first one goes, flip the plan over so it's upside down, kind of like I'm standing. First one goes from top to bottom corner and the detail actually uh, shows you how those end up there is actually, they don't go right in the corner. They just, you get as much gluing surface as possible along the lingeron um, in those locations. So, all right, so I'm gonna cut, uh, cut these diagonals. Um, um, they all go from top corner to bottom corner, um, top corner to bottom corner, and that's one, two, three, four, there's five of those. Um, the last one, hopefully I've got clearance. If I don't, I will uh, have to move this block, but no big deal. I'm going to pull these staples right now before I do this, and uh, then we'll get these in place. All right. All right, so this, this process is just a, it's a trial and error process, so. You just lay your piece in and you keep adjusting until you get an absolute perfect fit like that. Jeez. This one needs to be relieved just a touch on the tip right here. So I'll just change the angle on this one slightly. See what kind of fit we got. It drops in perfectly, so. And I purposely left my wax paper in place so I can get that all set. We need the next one. Much longer piece here. Hold it where I where I need it, and then I can uh, I can just uh, sight down the line here, and I actually come out pretty close. I leave the line so that uh, I have to usually go back and sand at least once. So just make a couple marks, and then. Uh, 
connect the dots. And I go cut that. And we fit and sand. Angles are good. This back one can change just a little bit. Gotta take some off the nose area here. So I'll just alter that just a little bit. Perfect fit. Next one up. All right, so I've got all those. Uh, I got all those cut, and uh, this one sits back an eighth of an inch from what what is the seat back area um, or the rear spar carry through. It's that. Uh, it's that as well. So, um, <clears throat> and then. We've got uh, uh, all of those in place. And then there are two more pieces that I cut that uh, there's, they're basically the stabilizer, the, vert the horizontal stabilizer mounts. Um, this is one right here. You can see the shape goes in there like that. And then the front one actually is uh, that this shape. And that one goes in here. And since we're bolting through those, um, just making double sure that I've got the uh, I've got the grain going the right way because I want to be bolting across the grain um, across the grains that are in the board. So I've got those oriented properly. So once uh, this piece is in, this is a nice perfect perfect fit. So um, now I can mix up some epoxy and and get all these uh, get all those in place. So. Let's, uh, let's do that. All right, so I got all that in place, and I'm uh, everything is uh, clamped up over here and doing its thing. So I've got uh, this piece in and clamped up. And that seems good. And uh, all of these are in, and they're in good shape. So once uh, once this sets up, then I'll actually pull this one off the table, and I will uh, assemble the other side. And then we'll do the plywood on both because what I have to do is I've got to I have to put the plywood, not glue it, but I have to 
sort of attach it to the side here, but I have to let it overhang this front section um, so that I can then build the frame for, uh, for the front section. And then I can um, mark out the plywood and then, and then take it back off and cut it to the right shape and leave that eighth inch gap here and then start the RS9 members, the three quarter by three quarter members going this way. Um, and uh, yeah, and that'll be, that'll put me in uh, good shape for that. All the other pieces are all cut here. And uh, I had to reference the plans so often uh, building uh, this part, I decided to bring a paper copy. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> instead of looking at my phone really small, I needed to see them a little bit bigger. So now I just have to clean up a sawdust mess, and then I'll be uh, I'll be in really really good shape. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Um, it's nice to uh, uh, get a little bit more done. Uh, I think tomorrow I won't be able to come to the shop. So. Um, but uh, hopefully next week, during the week, we can get this one off the table and actually get the second one um, started. It's like we've got some really good momentum now, like to keep that rolling. And uh, yeah, so uh, hope you're doing well, and I'll catch you later.